Hello, in this session we will talk about what is NoSQL database. This is Hassan Mir from 02protraining.com. First thing first, NoSQL is a database management system. There are different kinds of database management systems. Relational database management system is the most common called RDBMS. Then we have online analytical processing systems referred to as data warehouses and then we have NoSQL database management systems. In general, database management system provides a mechanism for storing and retrieval of data. If you go back in history, first flat file systems were created and in 1970s, COD came up with a theory, relational theory, and based on that, relational databases were developed. The problem was that in flat file system, there was no standard of storing data and there was no standard of communicating with the data. Everybody has implemented their own protocol and that was creating lots of inefficiencies. So relational databases standardized the way we communicate with the database. Then life moved on and everything was perfect. Suddenly we have a big data scenario which is a recent scenario and relational databases are unable to cope with the huge amount of data so the answer was no SQL databases. So they were created because of the limitations of relational databases when it comes to the big data. So the main focus of no SQL databases is to provide scalability, performance and high availability. They are scalable, they can handle large amount of data. So as the data keeps on growing, the scalability is there, performance is there too and high availability is there as well in terms of hardware failures. So the ability of NoSQL databases to handle a large amount of data with amazing performance comes at a compromise. They offer less functionality as compared to relational databases. And also the data is structured in relational databases and in online analytical processing systems. You have to define the table structure in advance. You have to tell the system, okay, the table will have 10 columns and each column will take this data type and this would be the maximum value you can insert in a column and so on. And this way you can't handle unstructured data where there is no fixed format. Format is either changing or or it is not fixed because one instance of an entity is available in one structure, another instance is available in another structure. So no SQL databases can handle both structured data and unstructured data. Example of unstructured data would be media, audio files, video files, log files, and the blogs that people are writing, text messages, and so on. NoSQL is a category which can further be divided into three categories, key value store databases, tabular databases, and document-oriented databases. Here are some examples of each type. Memcached, Coherence, and Redis are examples of key value store kind of databases. Big Table from Google is an example of tabular NoSQL database. Then we have Edgebase and Accumulo. Then in document oriented databases, MongoDB is the most popular one. Then we have CouchDB and Cloudent. So what is missing from NoSQL databases if you compare them with relational databases? Joins is not there. Because of this join, relational databases are not very scalable. So in NoSQL databases, this functionality is not implemented and hence the scalability and performance comes in. The support for complex transactions is not there. You cannot do the following, for example. You can't say insert these three records, then update the two records, then check something. If it's not true, roll back everything. Okay. So transaction support is not there. and the constraint support is not there as well. So transaction support and constraint support has to be implemented at the application level. For example, you cannot say this is a null column and the value in this column has to be equal to the sum of the other two values and so on. So constraints are not implemented at the database level. Those limitations were there because the focus is to provide performance and scalability. and Although SQL language is not there, but sometimes other languages are provided to perform queries with the database, and th that is the reason some authors do not like to use the 
the translation of NoSQL as NoSQL, they translate NoSQL as not only SQL. So this way they emphasize the fact that although SQL, the structured query language, is not there to query the database, but some other language is there to do queries. Again, NoSQL databases provide very less functionality but very high performance and relational databases provide low performance and way more functionality. So what are the situations or scenarios where one would use NoSQL databases? If you need an ability to store and retrieve data, high quantities of data, then you might want to use NoSQL and if storing relationships between elements is not important because your application can handle that, you do not need to tell the database the relationships between the structures, then NoSQL is the way to go. And if you are in a situation where you are dealing with growing list of elements like Twitter posts, logs, blogs, etc., then NoSQL is an answer. If you are dealing with unstructured data or if the structure of the data is changing rapidly, then NoSQL can handle this better than relational databases. For example, today you have 10 attributes in an entity, tomorrow you have 15 and so on. It's very difficult to modify these structures in uh, the table structures in relational databases frequently. If you are in a need to develop a prototype or demo application pretty quickly, then you might want to use NoSQL database. It's pretty uh, fast when it comes to the development. You do not have to create structures in advance. And if you are in a situation where constraints and validation logic is handled by the application and database is not expected to perform these validations, then NoSQL is a good candidate. If you have transaction processing in the scenario, then you might want to use relational databases. For example, where you want to commit either all the transactions or none of the transactions. Like bank transfer is an example. You're transferring money from one account to the other. You don't want to be in a situation where money is reduced in one account and it has not reached the other account. And if it is required that joins will be handled by the databases and your application is not able to join the two sets, then you have to rely on relational databases. And also, if validations and constraints are expected to be handled by the databases and your application is not able to handle uh, for any reason the validations and constraints, then you must rely on relational databases. It will not be fair to say that only consider using NoSQL if you have big data in the situation. NoSQL could also be used if you have not so much big data, if you are dealing with normal data, then still NoSQL could be used because they are very easy to work with. So that's why that is not one of the points in this slide when not to use NoSQL.